A new legal challenge over a person's right to die is being heard at the High Court. Campaigners backed by Christian Concern are protesting, saying a ruling in Conway's favour would undermine the dignity of human life. Today's about the Conway case. Noel Conway is a 67-year-old man who wants to change the law to allow assisted suicide. It's my body. I have a right to determine how I should die. And more importantly, when I should die. What he's going to do is to argue that uh, the law preventing assisted suicide is incompatible with the Human Rights Act. So this case is all about a balance of rights. The right to live is more use and the right to have the best possible care, that's what we want. I want to be allowed to die and I want to be allowed to die at home. The problem is that the right to die can so easily become the duty to die. It worries me that if Noel changes the law, that other people may become vulnerable. <laughs> Sorry. The case today is about ending life unnaturally. It's about wanting to die, doctor prescribed death as we call it. It will give doctors the right to kill their patients. It might be me, I might have a doctor coming around and killing me. What's happening is too dangerous. It, you know, bad, bad cases don't make good laws. There have been 10 attempts in British Parliament to legalise assisted suicide. We are here to protect the most vulnerable in our society, not to legislate to kill them. Dignity in dying is a misnomer. We have dignity in living. We can exhibit dignity in suffering. We can exhibit the ultimate dignity in communion with our Saviour. And at the end of the day, that's what this case comes down to. It's about assisted living until you die naturally, not about so-called assisted dying, which is just a euphemism for killing through assisted suicide or euthanasia. We can't even get in to say we don't want to die. <laughs> you know, you know, how ridiculous is that? Yes. No, I don't want you to lose your space. No, no, no. I don't want you to. I A lot of good people here supporting the wrong cause. But thank heavens, Christian concern is standing up for people who don't want to die early. I'm not saying I want to live forever, but I don't want to die before my time. I'm here because what's happening is too dangerous. We oppose the use of euthanasia, which came out of my own experience. I think that when we start to promote suicide as a solution for life's problems, we're on a very, very dangerous, slippery slope. Universally, disability groups oppose this law, as do doctors' associations. Um, so that tells you a lot about you know, the people doing the procedure and the people at risk of the procedure, uh, you know, doctor-prescribed death, as we call it. Um, they're the ones advocating the strongest against this law. Our position is that the law should not change because of any change in the law to allow assisted suicide will put pressure on vulnerable people to end their lives out of fear of being a burden upon family or, uh, or on a society that's short of resources. Holland introduced um, assisted dying for the term of the year on 2002. Initially, hardly any patients with psychiatric illnesses or dementia sought suicide. Now, just 13 years later, assisted suicide is sought and granted to elderly, lonely or bereaved people. The world doesn't welcome you as a disabled person and euthanasia is an extension of that. You're not wanted, you don't want, you know, you can't work here, you can't get, or as somebody once said to me in a restaurant, we don't serve disabled people on Saturdays. Hello, Nikki. Hiya. I must have something say to you, I have so much and, um, respect for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I listen dog. to your story, and um, then uh, my mom came up. She, I, uh, I helped her for four years. She has yeah. Alzheimer. Yeah. And all, from one side, I think mom go, and from the other side, mom stay here years. Yeah. Well, when you Very say the other side, you mean you have people saying, let her go? Yeah, and I don't want that. You shouldn't be put in that it's, position. It's my mother. That's what's wrong. You shouldn't, yeah. the question shouldn't even be there. Yeah. Yeah. How dare people say, yeah. oh, look at her, let's kill her. I think I have a reasonable 
idea what Noah was going through because I was locked in for nearly five months. Following that, I didn't move my body at all for over two years. I had to be fed. I, had to, I still have to have an awful lot done for me. Um, you know, I lost my job. I lost my home. My husband lost his job because he became a carer at 25. We'd only been married two years. I had a one-year-old child. Um, I know what I know what the struggle is. Believe me, I know what the struggle is. So, is it a state worse than death? I don't know because I've never been dead. Oh, can I have a hug from you? Yeah, you can. <laughs> you make it all worthwhile. Oh. Thank you. You make Thank it all worthwhile. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're okay. welcome. What's at stake here is much more than an individual's desire to die. It is protecting the rest of the vulnerable in society, the disabled, the mentally ill, um, the, the depressed, those who would suffer disproportionately as a result of the legalization of assisted suicide. Uh, you see in Belgium, for example, a 500% increase in euthanasia since it was legalized. In Switzerland, it's 700%. Um, 20 babies each year are given lethal injections in the Netherlands by court order. A thousand people a year in the Netherlands die without their consent by lethal injection. So these are the safeguards that are missing, that can't be legislated. Because once you go down that road, you can't stop. I suppose you've got to ask the question, where does palliative care fit in? Where, are the, where is the support for Noel to end his days in a compassionate manner with the support of services to help him with his death? It seems odd in a way that we're saying, hey, currently, what's on offer is so dismal, it's just best if we choose to die. It's not dignity in dying, it's dignity in suicide. People aren't dying, they're going to commit suicide. What is dignified about having a death doctor, like in Switzerland, come into your house on Friday, because your family have said she's going to die on Friday? It's bizarre. So no, it isn't the answer to unbearable pain and a life shortening illness. The answer is being cared for and absolutely brilliant palliative care. This case is symptomatic of where we are at, as a culture. Uh, if you go to our website at christianconcern.com and look at our cases, you'll see that all of the cases have a similar spiritual um, fusion to them that there is a lack of meaning, there's a lack of Jesus Christ in our culture. So we at Christian Concern are here to make sure um, that they maintain the strong protections in the law on behalf of life.